Hi everyone, it's Kesman Cross YouTube channel. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Conwood's new coach for 6.2. If you are a returning Kesman Cross, welcome. Like, comment. If you are new to the channel and you're watching this for the first time, like, comment, and subscribe. Means the world to me now. So, as you know, Craig McRae is a new coach. We've now got Justin Leppich, who is ahead of the strategy. And I think he's a defensive coach as well. And then you have Brendan Bolton, who is the director of coaching. Um, I think at some point, Justin Leppich wanted to be part of of the lease management, I'm pretty sure. But I'll say this, um, that it, it's rare. To pick someone from outside the club, I think it is a lot good. It is a lot good than picking people inside your own club because, let's be honest, you're not gonna get that opportunity as much. Like, I think, um, physical and mentally, I think it will be good for the boys. I think the game planning will be, is to keep attacking and no doubt play with the way that we've been playing. But if we can have some defensive mechanism in place, if Justin Lepich there, I think that helps our, our defence. And don't forget, he was a defensive coach. Now... He tried at Brisbane, well, he was originally at, at Richmond, came to Brisbane as a coach when I sacked him, and then he came back to Richmond and helped down those premier shoots. And he's a three time premier shoot player. Craig McRae is a three time premier shoot player at, at, as well, so we have to remember that. Brendan Bolton was part of the Hawthorne assistant coaches that helped Clarkson with Hawthorne's premier shoot. Now, yeah, cut the way that Carlton have treated him, um, the, way, the way that they sacked him because of that, I think that rebuild as well, like, you're probably not expecting to have too many wins. Um, but I think with Brendan Bolton, he coached Hawthorne, I think it was 2014. For five games. So I think with that as well, I think that you're going to get more of a better understanding of that and, and, and see how he goes as director of coaching for Brendan Bolden because I think he, he'll be a good assistant coach. Like I think... Uh, it, it's a great pickup compared to Carlton and, and our arguments at the moment. We've got ahead of them, right? Both parties decided to mutually part ways because Buck, Buckley didn't think he could coach out the five years, and, and, and this is going to be part of the six. Of going through like a going through a rebuild and eventually getting us back up a, high on the ladder, and then having some success and long term success, short term pain for long term gain is, is what I like to say. Carlton they've only done one rebuild. Let's be honest. Certain things with Essen might take longer. To, to get over it. Um, even the salary cap for Carlton, I think, it, you know, it, it, it took him a lot longer. Carlton's way of thinking is get someone in, overpay them, and then look to, to try and get up the ladder. Like, they don't like to accept that at the time that they want, need to rebuild. Um, they didn't like to make those tough decisions. So always, 
when they got caught trying to sell a cat. It took them a long time to to get over it, and I think sometimes it, you're better off rebuilding when you start being at the bottom and actually say, okay, well, we need to start rebuilding. We need to get some kids in, go through the draft, get the right picks in, get the right players in, and have a strategy of going forward of want, wanting to go back up the ladder and have this success like the Richmonds have done, the Hawthorns have done. Geelong went through the draft and they picked up Gary Ablett Jr. on the father's son. They picked up Steve Johnson, Joe Corey, Jim Bartell. So it starts from the draft. Go through the draft, pick those players and work your way up. Instead of changing the salary cap and then go right. That this is a, a the the right way to go about it, and you got to stick with the course, and that's what probably what they need to do. So this is why with Collingwood, what we did was we've had a rebuild, try to be up there. Unfortunately, we were we fall short. Twenty eighteen was a prime example. 2019, we fell short in the premium, which was sort of fun, let's be honest. And 2020 was a tough COVID year. Um, we're sleeping towards eight. So we had to make tough decisions based on, well, no one else wanted to come to our football club because no one wanted to say no, no because, oh, the salary cap issues. Then we had stuff going on with the board and then the EGM failed. And my advice is, well, why would we go through an EGM when it's just going to hurt the club longer and it take the club longer to recover? Um, simple as that. So I think Carlton, Carlton now going through that system of an, an EGM's coming. It's happening. So they haven't really... The, the, the long-time board member, or, or, or long-time president, a, a, a former president, hasn't really thought that through of, well, you know what, maybe there are factors in that. Maybe it's just that if you feel unhappy, you should talk to the club as always. And that's what people don't get. So it does have the club, but they don't want to admit that. So that's why it's important not to let that happen. I hope you, I hope you guys do like this video. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, and subscribe. It means more to me. Go the mighty Paris.